Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. I am Sheaton Atigari. Good morning. And I'm Rafael Sheaton. It's a joy <laughs> seeing you again. That's yes. a very uh, wonderful weekend. Restful weekend. Uh, Nigeria has pledged to address security lapses that led to the draconian U.S. travel ban that restricts immigration from Nigeria and other five nations. Besides Africa's most populous nation, the new measure also includes Myanmar, Eritrea, Kyrgyzstan, Sudan, and Tanzania. Unlike the travel uh, ban Trump revealed in January 2017, shortly after taking office, which banned citizens of certain Muslim-majority countries from entering U.S. territory, the latest directive, which takes effect on February 22nd, is less sweeping. The official said it will only target certain visa categories and will primarily focus on people seeking to move to the United States rather than those simply aiming to visit. Following the announcement, Mr. Femi Adeshino, the special, advi special advisory to Nigerian President Mohamedou Buhari, announced that the president was forming a committee on the issue. In a statement, it said that the Nigerian government was committed to maintaining productive relations with the United States on a number of issues, including matters of global security. The committee will work with the U.S. government, Interpol, and other stakeholders to ensure all updates are properly implemented. I mean, th this is this is really interesting, Rufai. You know, when I heard when I heard that Nigeria had been added to the list, and I saw the other countries on the list, I was in shock. Shocking, <laughs> shocking. I mean, somebody will will think that at this point in time in our national life, uh, this should be happen happening to Nigerians. But uh, there are many arguments to it. Uh, number one, when you look at what the United States government is saying, they're saying we're increasingly having people that are coming to coming to stay in America and getting those visas. And, and for them, too, it's a strain on basic services in their countries, a strain on their health care, a strain on the likes, because those people, they in turn get citizenship, and the government has to pretty much pay mm -hmm. uh, for whatever those people use in America. And, and that's, let's not forget, uh, there are simply quotas everywhere in the world on what we call net migration. Mm -hmm. If we check the UK now currently, the UK is adopting the Australian method that is a point-based immigration system that it is based on the degree and qualification you have that you can come and you accumulate points and you gather points. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. Migration is good, but there is something called quality migration. You want people that are coming into your country to have that quality, to be able to add viably to your economy. But what would you say to people that are of the school of thought that this was a Muslim ban? Because if you do look at the countries on that list, most of them have about 50% or more of Muslim citizens. And now that this list has been updated, there are even more school of thoughts that have referred to it as an African ban because we now have a higher number of African countries on the list. I mean, when you look at it critically, uh, uh, the Americans, not holding briefs for them, will say it's quite empirical. Look mm -hmm. at Myanmar. Myanmar is largely Buddhist. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the country where House of Sushi is from. Look at Kyrgyzstan. I mean, it's based on the empirical proof that you have a lot of people taking a pathway to come into their country and they want to stop it. Yeah. So it's, it's based on an analytical disposition. I mean, I think the, the, what we should be asking ourselves is there is no country in the world that is sending in, you know, viable people that migrate to other countries in the world uh, that there is no pushback. Yeah. The quality of people leaving from Nigeria to America might not be people on the high echelon. But if you look at, and, if you look and, at and Nigerians you look at, when, that have moved to the U.S., you know, there, there are reports that we actually do make up a large amount of people that are doing really well in the United States. We make up a large amount of people, but when you look at the entirety of the disposition, mm. it's not like the U.K. where you know that a sizable amount of Nigerians, they're medical doctors and the likes, and they're adding to the economy. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people that are going there with, you know, visas that are not valid and the likes, that are overstaying. I mean, the other day I was in the American embassy, and there was, there, was, there, was, there was a woman that had overstayed her visa. She's even gone to give birth there at some point oh and like putting strength and strain on the system. Everybody wants, everybody wants viable immigration. Mm -hmm. But in a case where you have people just going there to pretty much take advantage of the system, mm -hmm. then they have to look at to their net immigration quarter. Mm -hmm. and, and let's not have this argument that it's a Trump thing. It's not a Trump thing. Obama did a lot to cut down net immigration in America, but a lot of people don't know. Maybe because Trump might just be very, very outward and say, you know his... what, yeah, we're shutting our yeah. borders and the likes. But it's an empirical proof that we should, should look at words. What is causing all this? Why is it that we cannot stay in our country 
and live to the maximum potential in our country too. You, you get my point. So those Definitely. are the questions we should ask ourselves. It's not that anybody's trying to witch because we're so quick to say, okay, witch hunt. In fact, I've even heard some people argue this way. I go back in time and say maybe it all started from the reciprocity thing yeah. that, that happened, you know, that it's harder to get a Nigerian visa, so Americans are going back and forth. Every country has a net immigration quota. And when you start to cross it, they say, oh, it's hazardous for my country. Yeah. And I, I can I definitely back up what you said with numbers. When I was doing looking at the numbers this morning, we've actually seen in 2018 alone, we had about 8,000 immigration uh, uh, visas that were issued to Nigerian citizens. And even that number, 8,000, is, 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 is even more than those five countries put together. You can imagine. So well, I'm hearing that our guest in Abuja is ready for us. Right. All right, right, let's quickly move on to you, uh, Joshua Dalmo. It's a joy having you in Abuja. Let, let's just talk through this. I mean, make us have a sense of what is happening as regards uh, this ban and the reaction of the federal government to this. Thank you. Thank you, Rufai. Thank you, Shay. Um, I think uh, the ban is coming uh, not really as a shock to some of us, but uh, as a wake up call. And I think it would be good. Uh, if the federal government does not go again politicizing this. Uh, so far, I think the president is responding well, set, setting up a committee to look into this. Also via the uh, Minister of Interior, uh, Alaji Rav Ari Bishala and co. But the truth is this, um, U.S. is running a mantra of U.S. first, and every right-thinking government should do that for their country. But the problem we have in Nigeria is that we love to politicize everything. I was hearing you earlier when you were saying, so people say it's maybe this thing is winch on thing or anything. These things are nonsense. What the US is simply doing is the right thing. If you have enemies and you notice that your enemies can use a channel to come in, no matter how the channel has been favorable to you in the past, you're gonna block that channel because you don't want your enemies to use that as a link to you. One of the recent policies in Nigeria that is, I feel is one of the reasons you guys had to do, it, do this was when there was an, uh, an executive order that um, people can get visas on arrival in Nigeria. I mean, you can imagine that in these times. That is one. Two, another issue there has to do with the lingering terrorist issues in the country, which shouldn't have been a problem. But why it's a challenge in the international community is the way our government handled this. Another thing is this. We don't have a robust, correct, up-to-date database, not even with our international passport, whereby you can easily generate information. Like one of the reasons uh, the U.S. government gave was uh, there were security information that we are not given. Even we citizens know this. How can we be fighting Boko Haram for this long and then you come up and tell us that technically Boko Haram has been defeated and we still have all this onslaught, gruesome killings going on every day, including the ones that the media teams are not reporting. So, and of course, you know, American has its own intelligence report that they don't have to come through the, uh, the, 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 the official way of your government or your security personnel giving them. They have their own intelligence report here on the ground. So even when you give them a false information, they just look at you and then they laugh. Right here in Nigeria, American flag was burnt. Right here in the city capital, nobody was held for that. And you expect this guy to still look at you and smile at you. Last year, the, 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 there was 8,000 U.S. visas given to Nigeria alone. So there's no point for us to come and start dancing around this. Our rule of law is so down that even if there's, a, I mean, an, an issue of breakdown that will affect the United States, they are not sure if we have what it takes or we have the willpower or the way our government handles law that they will be protected. So this is not just an issue of maybe it's a winch aunt or something. No, no, no. America wants to purge ourselves. America wants to protect ourselves. And they would go all out to do that. They don't care how you feel. If you 
are so bent on traveling out or you feel America is good, then you just have to go through the right means. If they think they can't welcome you, you're a threat, then you walk on your house, make Nigeria a very good place for everybody to come. Look at the countries that were added, I mean, look at the countries that were named, named with Nigeria in the blacklist. I mean, just look at, look at that list, look at those countries. Why won't they mention Ghana? Ghana here is doing perfectly okay. Why won't they mention Mali? Mali is having ter 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 terrorist issues going on. But Mali is not in that list. And some other, South Africa is doing well. Even with, with the xenophobic issues, they, they didn't blacklist them. We can't be toiling and playing with security and having the lives of Nigerians so cheap, and then you expect everybody to embrace us. That nonsense is not going to happen. If Nigeria was US, are we going to take the kind of decision Trump is taking or we're going to also allow everybody to come and then, any, and then enemies will come through a channel that you cannot prove. I mean, Mr. I mean, Adam, I'm going happen. to come in here. Let's talk about some of the security lapses that you've mentioned. Um, this ban actually came into okay. effect in 2017, where about seven of them, where we have the likes of Nigeria uh, in Tanzania put on there. Now, let's talk about how we got on this list, because we were made aware of the security measures and the things that had to be put in place for us not to get on this list. And like you said, countries yeah. like Mali, Ghana, even Chad, and it, we can't find them on this list. Yes. So this committee that is being set up by the president, don't you think that that's, you know, crying over spilt milk? Isn't it something that should have been fixed beforehand? You know... Any, the issue with, it's unfortunate that um, the Nigerian government, not just this administration, past administration, don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't plan ahead. They don't, when you tell them this is wrong, they politicize it. Even with this ban, if you read on the news, you still see the two major political parties still playing games. You, you can imagine that. So this committee set up, I don't know, I don't know what their plans is. But definitely, it's not a two weeks thing. It's not a one month thing. <laughs> they would have, I mean, how do you rewrite what has been happening in the last one month, two months, one year? How do you rewrite the rule of law that has been brought down to almost zero level, impunity? How do you, how do you handle that? Now, killings are going on every day, and um, these things are put on air, and I mean, the U.S. government, the international community are telling you this is wrong, this is right. This is right. Somebody will tell me that Shore was released uh, just like that without the involvement of U.S. government, which all of us know is not true. So the truth is this. Every time we don't put our house in order and we play politics within ourselves and um, the, 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 the federal government is not actually putting a value on Nigerian lives, we can play this politics among ourselves. We can treat ourselves anyhow. But when we get to the international community, they look at us. They love us for who okay. we are as Mr. a people. Adalimo, I'm but when they notice that, when they notice that, we can take care of Mr. Adalimo, I just hold on to that thought. We're going on a short break, and when we come back, we're going to continue this conversation about the U.S. immigration visa ban. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Morning Show. Thank you for staying with us. We're still joined in our Abuja studios by Mr. Joshua Adalomo, a public affairs analyst discussing the U.S. immigration visa ban. Now, we're talking about this committee that has been set up by President Mohamed Buhari to look into this. And I'm curious to know how confident you are in the committee's efforts to take us off this list. Our... Um, thank you. I'm so confident about uh, the committee. Uh, the, the, the little I know about um, Alaji Rauf, I, I specialize somebody that is, is a very hardworking person. I know he's going to go all out to say that he can um, change this ban. And um, I, I think uh, so much will have to be done by them. Uh, one, I mean, about the image of not just um, the country or um, or abiding by the new rules or giving the rightful information to the U.S. government, but also trying as much as possible to pull the federal government on 
each stage to make sure that the right things are done at the right time and, and the rule of law is abided by. I think, I think they're going to perform well, but I don't think it's going to be a fast or a quick thing. Uh, it's going to be, it, this ban might linger on for a while. And then it's not really a total ban like, 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 like it is if you, if you read through the, 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 the ban. It's a, there's still room for uh, student visas, medical, uh, ter I mean, and tourist visas, but for immigrants, I mean, or residency, I don't, I don't think there's room for that. So it's not really a total ban. And as long as we meet up with, um, the committee is able to meet up with the, the, the requirements from the United States government, I think it will be a win-win. All right, uh, a part of the committee and what the committee will be deliberating are ways to be able to, you know, keep this in check. But a big elephant in the room will be, you know, the point being raised by the American government of Nigeria's constantly overstaying visa threshold. I mean, is there a way out of that? Sorry, I didn't get that come again. I mean, the big elephant in the room in this conversation will be a point raised by the Americans that Nigerians are always overstaying the stipulated visa threshold. Is there a way out of that? Ha! <laughs> there, there, there's only one way out, out of that, and that's when we all can make Nigeria a better place. The truth is this. You will never see a good thing and a bad thing and go for the bad thing or better, let me put it this way, you will never enjoy comfort and you want to go back to discomfort. So far for now, Nigeria is not all that comfortable for our citizens. And every Nigeria will tell you things are hard. And every Nigeria will tell you four years ago and the reality on ground, they will tell you hope is not that uh, right for so many of them. And so you see so many Nigerians trying to push in. Now with this ban, this won't reduce Nigerians still trying to travel out. Canada is there. Some of them don't even care. They want to go to Ghana here and things. Imagine Ghana here sending Nigerians back to their countries, fighting them. South, um, South Africa here sending Nigerians back and they want to be complaining about the US thing. So I think what, what can really happen is one, our image needs to change. There's, if our image and what we project start changing and our government is raised the, the value of, uh, of our citizens high, you see Nigerians coming back home. The truth is this, there's no place as sweet as home. Most Nigerians, most Nigerians love their country. They love to be here. The truth is, you, if, if you do business in Nigeria, you're going to make more profit than when you're in the U.S. That's the truth. But then, when you weigh it, if I do business here, the profit I'm going to make, I'm going to use it to actually pay for my security, pay for, for, to generate power, pay for water, pay, as in you do ev almost everything for yourself, and you still pay tax. Then you ask yourself, what is the federal government doing for me? So the truth is the federal government needs to put a high value on the lives of Nigerians. That is one. Two, the Nigerian government, after doing this, will have the boldness to have some sweet bilateral agreement with the United States that for every Nigerian that you see that is living above the stipulated time in your country, please deport them back. Or better, better put, not only deport them back, but we are going to even give them sanctions. The truth is this. If the house is good, there won't be reasons to go out. But if your house is in this area and people cannot guarantee the safety of their lives, to drive or to travel to the north now is at the risk of your life, not even your money. Not even your money is at the risk of your life. You might have so much money and still these bandits will collect the money and still kill you. It is as worse as that. And then the painful part of it is when the people who should correct this are telling you that there's nothing like that. I mean, this is bad. It's okay to hone up to your responsibility and say, yes, Nigerians, we are really fighting this. We've not been able to achieve it, but it's a fight that we will achieve. Then come in to tell us lies. You make the situation more worse for people. So I think if the house is put in order, every other thing can be checkmated. It's difficult to say Nigerians staying abroad for so long. I, I know of someone who stays around my neighborhood, who traveled, who is a government staff, who has traveled 
for a government meeting in U.S. And he's not yet back, and he's meant to be there for just maybe a month. He's been gone for seven months. The guy is not yet back. He is a gov he's a civil servant. I was like, the, the civil, civil, civil servant job here is like security. That guy is not yet back. I'm sure, he, I'm sure the visa was just, I mean, a short-term visa. But the guy is not back, and he's a civil servant. Mm. Mr. It is that bad. In, so you I think, I mean, I mean... Yes, you have stated some very interesting facts. My next question to you is, in addition to this committee that has been set up, um, Femi Adishino, who is the presidential spokesman, has commented that Nigeria would remain committed to maintaining productive relationships with the United States. Now, I just want to know, doesn't this put a strain on the relationship that currently exists? And also, how do we from February 22nd, begin to now look at these uh, problems and start to solve them one by one? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Femi Adeshino was doing his job, and I think uh, he, 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 he said what he said is okay. But the truth is, it's not as simple as the statement he put out there. Um, definitely, uh, the travel ban that just came has been playing a little while in the last six months. Uh, you remember some months ago, the Nigerian government had to send some envoy to ask why most Nigerians were turned down at the point, I mean, at, at the American embassy. So it's not just, the, the ban is just official. The play out has been, has been before now. And for the best way to react to this, it's still the same solution, to put your house in order. Um, what, what's making your people travel out? Security. When people are saved, the next thing is food. Um, make sure there's food security in the land. These things are not, they're not difficult things. It's just that our priorities are distorted. I mean, we're playing politics, we're, we're running after money. The, 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 the next thing after, after food is good education. Make education available. I mean, so many of these issues will drop off. So the, 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 the fact is that for to 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 to, the, the, to stop that ban or to get the American uh, government to 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 think or or think back on that ban is not something that can be done now. Uh, everybody knows <laughs> Donald Trump is not somebody that backs down on his actions. But if our government kind of walks on the request, make security good, uh, uh, stabilize and and put up a good database. Uh, and then, so, so that even if somebody does something wrong here, the police can track the person down via the bank, everything. For example, the Boko Haram guys, they, 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 I'm sure it's not all money they get in cash. There are people who go to the bank for them to collect this thing. Uh, is the federal government telling us that they don't have intel on all these things? If you don't have intel, put things in place. This is what the federal government, I mean, this is what the United States government is saying. You can't pinpoint people. You can't stop playing politics with demographics. Let, okay. let, 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 let's okay. know. Okay. Okay. Let, let's um, have a good okay. population just, just census. Just, just let's right. have everything in place. Just right, Dalobo, I, I just wanted to quickly react to this because time is not our friend. Um, as a story making the rounds, that uh, U.S. Speaker Nancy Pelosi. It's tried to reverse this true Congress. I mean, U.S. Congress moves to, to nullify a ban on Nigeria. This was out about, you know, a couple of hours ago. And uh, Atiko Obubakar is frowning at this. Is this not one step too further by Trump since Congress is trying to, you know, to, to work at this? Because other people will tell you that it's shutting the door at Africa's biggest economy. <laughs> okay. Uh, how far has Congress been able to stop Trump in most of his uh, decisions? That's the first question. They we took him to ask court the last one. time. Two. They took him to court. Uh, they took him to court on the last ban. They took him to court. And then they started getting people in. People started coming. You, they took him to court the last time. Good. Do you know they have enough evidences, enough reasons, enough paperwork before they come to take a decision? I'm sorry to say, the, in, the intel available to the U.S. government, can, it's, it's bigger than what is available to the Nigerian government. So when they make a decision, we can only try to hope or play a game of luck that, oh, no, let's wait we, we that can, they uh, change uh, it. Joshua, Joshua the, it's not a the case Congress, of hoping or playing a game of luck because Nancy Pelosi, the Congress, are pushing against this. So whatever... You know, the presence so in America do, has. How long do you the think Congress the Congress will be able to get this? 
how, for how long do you think the Congress can fight this? I wish tomorrow they leave this ban. That's my wish. I want to travel too. How long did it <laughs> take the, the Congress to patch an impeachment vote on I Trump? Mean, it didn't take long. On Trump? Yeah. Definitely. Both of, us know, <laughs> both of us know they will go through the standard process. I think from now, they have like three to five days to, to wrap this up. And if Trump wins this impeachment issue, do you think he's going to come back to lift this ban? No. If we do the right thing, the right thing will be done. Even if Trump is impeached, the next U.S. president or anybody coming on board is not going to pick this as his next agenda. There are several things the U.S. will do for itself before they now consider, oh, Nigeria is on ban. How do we look into this? Have they been able to meet up with the criteria put in place? Okay, so it's, 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 so, it's, it's painful it's, that we have to be. Uh, as we wrap it all up, uh, Joshua, Joshua, I'd like to say a big thank you to you us. as we wrap it all up. Uh, Joshua, thank you so much for your time. But I'd like to say it's not a complete ban, like you said. It's just on, you know, immig just immigration, immigration status visas. visas. Yes. So we, we should live from February 20th. We, we should say that. And uh, the Congress in America is looking at that very strongly.